guys, I'm Rebecca and today I'm going to be sharing with you some information about color theory. Today we're going to be going over the color wheel, about mixing, and warm and cool colors. So make sure you hit that subscribe button so you make sure that you don't miss the next installment of this series. You can also click right here and that will link to a web page on my website. And that basically is the index of all the tutorials that have been made as well as the upcoming ones. So make sure you check that out. And let's get started. So here's my actual like color wheel, color wheel. It is kind of trash. This back and the front fall off all the time because I've had this for years. It's something I highly recommend that you go grab if you are interested in color, whether that be for makeup, body painting, fashion, styling your house, whatever. And again, obviously painting because it's super useful. Pretty sure you could pick these up pretty much anywhere. I know you can pick it up at art stores. We probably could even pick it up at more of a craft hobby store. And it's something I would recommend grabbing if you don't have a very strong grasp in colors already. This is really gonna help you out kind of just figuring out how things add. It basically will tell you how things add if you added black, if you added white, whatnot. It's got all your colors. Super useful to have. There are only a couple of dollars. I would definitely pick one up. Since mine is rather beat up, I've actually made a couple little examples of my own and then I will also have graphics on the screen. So that's how we're going to be moving forward. So let's talk about colors. First off, we're gonna talk about primaries. In this tutorial, as well as most of the tutorials, we're going to be talking about primaries as in pigment primaries. Pigment primaries are red, blue, and yellow. That's probably what you learned in kindergarten as well. One thing to just note is these aren't the only primaries. For example, when you're talking about inks or like your printer or dyes, they usually use CMKY. So CMKY's primaries are cyan, yellow, and magenta. And those hues mix together to make all the different hues that it needs. K stands for black, that's not important. So CMKY, like the red, green, blue pigment primaries are what is called subtractive color. So the way that those work, it's basically the way makeup works. It's the way that most of the things that you're gonna see that's not a screen works is subtractive color. So when you see a red pigment, the way that that works is that this pigment actually basically creates colors by sucking up the other colors and only reflecting one of them. And that's why you see this is red. On the other side is RGB. So red, green, blue is basically what you're watching me right now. My camera, LED, your TV, your phone, all of those are RGB and that is for red, green, blue. So those are the primaries for additive color. And RGB is an additive color primaries. So the way that that works is if you started with black and you added light, you use light to create colors rather than subtractive colors where you start with white and you basically subtract colors so that it only reflects one. That's almost more cool information to know. It's not something that's gonna be super important so we're just going to be talking about red, blue, and yellow for these examples. When I do a color mixing tutorial, I'll probably talk a little bit more about process colors, but in general, these are what I'm gonna be talking about when we talk about primaries. So just to recap, our primaries are going to be red, yellow, and blue. So now that we've got our primaries figured out, we're gonna talk about secondary colors. Secondary colors are created by adding two equal parts of any two primary colors, then you get your secondaries. So our color wheel is up to six. For example, when you mix yellow and red, you get orange, yellow and blue, you get green, and then red and blue, and you get violet. So your secondary colors are orange, violet, and green. One thing to keep in mind when we're talking about secondary colors, especially because this is about makeup even more so than paint, Obviously with makeup, you're not gonna be doing quite as much mixing. If you're talking about body paint, you're probably going to be doing a lot of mixing. I do recommend that you get both primaries and possibly secondary colors because sometimes due to pigment limitations, chemical limitations, just depending on how the pigment is gonna reflect light, we don't actually have enough pigments to make all of our mixing colors make 
pretty secondary colors. So I do recommend grabbing your primaries and then seeing if they make nice greens or purples. So lastly, we have our tertiary colors. Our tertiary colors are basically 12 colors. They're all right here. The way you get a tertiary color is you add equal amounts of a primary color and a secondary color. For example, if you add an equal amount of red and violet, then you get red violet. So now we've added six more colors to our color wheel. We have red violet, red orange, yellow orange, yellow green, blue green, and blue violet. So now we have these 12 hues in total. Obviously there are a lot of hues between like green and blue green, but for simplicity's sake, we were basically gonna stick with these 12 as our color wheel. When we talk about color harmonies later on, this is the color wheel we will be using, just a standard 12 hue color wheel. We'll be going into tints, tones, and shades in the next tutorial, so we'll obviously be making a lot more colors with this, but when we're talking about pure hues, these are the 12 we are going to be talking about. I also wanna to touch on cool versus warm color schemes. So typically, warm colors are considered aggressive colors. They're colors that look like they're almost coming forward at you, and then while your cooler colors, those are colors that receive in your more passive colors. This isn't quite as important with makeup as it is with painting. When painting, this is kind of a big deal because it makes your shadows and your everything look correct. With makeup, you are painting on a 3D surface, so if you don't really wanna get into this, you definitely don't have to. But to really kind of advance your looks, it's good to know, for example, with kind of highlighting and contouring, or with halo eyes, if you use a cool color for your outer and inner corner, and then you put a really warm color on the center, that warm is gonna kind of wanna pop forward. You can do that with your lips. If you want to make your lips look a little bit bigger, wear a either blue-based red or a very true red, and then add a more kind of orange red in the center of your lips, and it can make it look like it's kind of popping forward a little bit more. So for our warm colors, we have reds, oranges, and yellows. When we're talking about cool colors, we have blues, violets, and greens. While this is true, it's not completely true, every color is on a spectrum. So you can actually have a warm yellow or a cool yellow, and you can have a warm blue or a cool blue. This is something that we'll be talking about even more in the color theory tutorials to come up, especially in undertones. So I do want you to just kind of be aware of this idea now and maybe start training your eye to understand it. If you have issues matching your foundation, can't figure out why lip color doesn't work for you, this is something that's gonna be really nice to know. So for example, when I paint, I always like to have a warm and a cool of my primary colors. So as you can see, these are clearly our primary colors. So I'm pretty sure most people would agree. These are obviously yellow, red, and blue, but we have some cooler colors on this side and then we have our warmer colors on this side. So you just wanna keep in mind that each color can kind of have its own undertone. For example, here are two blues that I use frequently. This is ultramarine blue, this is a gorgeous warm blue, while phthalo blue is a cooler blue. This is actually my favorite color out of the tube. I just think it's, it's basically my favorite color. So you can see they're both blue, but they're not the same blue at all. So something to keep in mind is that each color, no matter what, can be warm or cool because these hues are on a spectrum. So something to keep in mind is that every color is kind of on a spectrum. Unless you have a perfectly balanced blue, red, or yellow, they will lean either warm or cool without actually passing into another color. So obviously this is warmer, but we're not going into a more purple color. And then this is cooler and we're not going into a more kind of green color, even though they are a little more on the cool side. So to keep these tutorials from getting too long or overwhelming, I'm gonna wrap this up right now. I hope you found this helpful, and it might have felt a little bit like you were going back to kindergarten, but it's really important to have your foundations and your basics, especially because we will go into more advanced color theory as the series progresses. If you did enjoy this tutorial, please give it a thumbs up. You can also share it with any of your friends that you think would be helped by it. You can also subscribe and then you'll be notified when the next installment goes up. 
The next installment is going to be on tones, tints, and shades, and then the next tutorial, because there will be makeup components to this, will be on custom mixed lip shades, so I hope that you will tune in for those. You can also follow me on my different forms of social media. All those are on this bar right here. So most of the time it's Rebecca Shores, MUA, or Rebecca K. Shores. I hope you'll join me for my next video. They come out every Tuesday and Friday, and I will see you guys later.